Hey, what's up guys? So due to the fact that I don't like information being lost and the fact that this is really, really good information uh, that most people in this realm of energy research don't quite realize yet or haven't looked at or know a lot about, this is just more video proof for you that already know about this stuff. So I highly recommend you check out the rest of this video. Uh, it's very relevant for longitudinal waves and uh, transmission of this type of power. So what you're about to watch is some footage from seven years ago. It's pretty bad quality footage and it's even worse audio on some of it. That's just due to the nature of it being seven years ago. Could have even been recorded on a cell phone. So it's, a, it's my colleague Alex Petty. Uh, he gave me permission to republish these. So I took the five, I think, videos or six videos, put them all in one place right here on this video. So longitudinal waves and uh, transverse waves. Those are the two most important electricity transfer methods that are commonly known. But this one that you're about to watch isn't well known. So this is about the Tesla, help, Tesla hairpin circuit. All right, enjoy. Uh, I'll put all the links and stuff back to the original videos in the description below. Make sure you watch the whole length of this video. The very last video on this uh, is actually technically the first one, but I put it at the end because I think this other video is better to start with. All right, peace out, have a good day, and I hope you enjoy. Share the video, and uh, that's it, bye. Hello, I'm Alex Petty of Singularis Corporation, and today I want to, I want to show you um, XC power transmission. Uh, about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks now, uh, we were at the AEPC uh, Energy Conference hosted by Larry Jarbo down in Southern Maryland. And um, there I uh, met with uh, Carl Paulsness, who is, does, does a lot of work with uh, Tesla. And, we, were, and uh, we just compared notes. And a lot of the, the work that we're doing at, at uh, Singularix is, is very, uh, very in line with the stuff Tesla was doing over 100 years ago, except instead of manifesting the spark, get, uh, rather manifesting the nonlinear waveform, which we call XC, uh, and Tesla called radiant energy, or some now call scalar waves. Uh, instead of manifesting it with a spark app, as Tesla did, we, we do it with um, a waveform that we call the Z-Wave, uh, as some of you may have seen on jeffreyandcook.com. Jeff, Jeff has put a lot of that stuff on, on, the, on his site. In any case, uh, Jeff is the CTO of Singularis Corporation, by the way. So in any case, we... Um, Today I want to show you XC power transmission, how, uh, how Tesla went about it, and uh, how Carl uh, also dem demonstrates it. And I want to thank Carl for showing me this great circuit. It's, it's very dramatic and very cool. So here it is. Um, all right, so here we have a, we start off with a high voltage transformer, spark gap, and then we've got these two large copper rods, okay? Uh, at the bottom, a couple of uh, high voltage capacitors. So I've got a couple of pro scope probes on the, top, on the top line of my scope. This is at the spark gap, okay? And at the bottom line of my scope, this is actually um, at the, sort of the output signal, the scalar wave. Um, and I've also set up sort of a power transmission line, <laughs> if you like. It goes from, you know, from the copper rods, basically. That starts, you know, starts right here both sides. And it goes all the way around you know, my garage here. Comes down. You see the power lines here. All the way over here. And then it's a little dark in here. And then down to here. This is a halogen light bulb. It's, 100 and, um, it's a 120 volt, 100 watt you know, light bulb that I bought this, I bought this morning. It's a uh, so one thing that's worth noting is this is very, so we're using very fine copper wire here. This is um, 36 AWG, so it's about, about as wide as a hair. If you were to power a 100 watt light bulb with this, with, it, with the such thin gauge wire, nor, under normal circumstances, you would end up with, um, uh, you know, a vaporized wire. It would, it would just glow red and, and, and burn up. So, so the fact that we can, you know, we can do this is. Uh, with the scalar energy, the scalar waves, or, or the XC, is, um, is quite significant. So um, let's get started. First thing I want to show is just the normal high voltage spark. This is for comparison. So here's the spark. I'm going to kick it off. 
well. So you see, I've got a nice shape to it. And you can see in the, in the scope. And then there's a little, you can see it. Um, Feel for it, you know, goes, goes up, and this is the strange sort of area in the middle, and then comes back and up, so up for infinity, and then back from negative infinity, and off it goes. Um, and then that's the normal part, okay? So everything happening, the, the effect is kind of on this side of the circuit, you know, this is reduced essentially, so the way the charge sort of built up and then jumps across the part that that's. You know, it's sort of central to the, uh, not the state, not the scale or anything, but, you know, the X, the X, the A form. There it is. Alright, uh, right, now, to, um, the show, it's quite, um, quite different when we add the capacitors here. Um, it's quite loud, and the whole, I mean, the, you'll see that in the spark, it's a whole different, it's a whole different beast. Um, very big, blue, incredibly loud, and and also I'll start off by showing you the guy. Here we go. So as you can see, this pole is lit up through that power transmission line. This wire up here, totally cool, room temperature. It's not hot, it's not hot at all. Um, it's totally, totally cool. Right? And that light is fully glowing. So this is, uh, this light bulb is being lit by, by not, not, not the power running through the line, but it's being lit by this XC, this, this nonlinear waveform, uh, which, which is high, a highly efficient way to transfer energy. Uh, as you can see, you know, this, this bulb was fully lit, and this wire is cold. So, some other, some other interesting effects. You take a light bulb. Take a light bulb. Okay. Lights so you can see a little bit better. Okay, here we go. Actually, that was very strange.
This demonstration shows how XC power transmission uh, can be used to very efficiently send power along a line. This wire is completely cold right here. Completely cold. You saw how the light bulb was completely lit. Um, and we did that with, with using scalar energy or XC power transmission. So uh, that's what I want to show you. And uh, thanks for watching. Check out singularix.com or also jeffreyncook.com for more information about these, um, these effects. Thanks. Hi, I'm Alex Petty from Singularis Corporation, and I want to show you some additional effects of the uh, circuit that I've been working with. Um, take a look at this apparatus. I've got um, a bowl of water here. In the bowl of water, I've got a um, 120 watt, 100, sorry, 120 volt, 100 watt halogen light bulb. Um, I've got that in submerged in a, in normal, you know, tap water. Okay, I've got. Um, these two rods here that go up, uh, tied together by a bar, another copper uh, rod at the top. At the bottom of each of those rods, I've got high voltage capacitors. I've got coming back from that, I've got a spark spark gap here, and then I've got the high voltage transformer. Okay, so I'm going to be sending the um, signal through this, and um, what you're going to be seeing is the light bulb is going to be fully illuminated. Um, although it won't be lit with the usual kind of energy. This is going to be the nonlinear waveform that we in there. It's referred to as XC. Tesla used to call it radiant energy, and some today will call it scalar, uh, scalar waves. So um, when this light bulb is lit uh, in this way, um, I will be able to put my hand in the water. Um, I'm, you can see these bare leads right here. Uh, I'm going to touch these bare leads with my bare hands, um, all that underwater, and no harm. Um, will come to me, again, because of the nature of this energy. It doesn't, doesn't seem to interact in the, in the way that, the, uh, that it's conventional energy, the usual stuff it does. One thing, one point I want to make, uh, no one should try this at home unless they absolutely know what they're doing, because this circuit, if you do it incorrectly, will kill you. So do not do this unless you are absolutely 100% sure that you know, you know what you're doing. Okay, so... I'm going to turn the circuit on, and when I do, you won't be able to hear a thing I'm saying because it's so loud. So I'm just going to demonstrate. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, that the energy that illuminated that light um, did not uh, present any kind of current uh, through my body of any kind. Uh, it, it's again, it's not that the energy travels in the usual way through the conductor, but rather um, it, it moves such through that wire in such a way that it's the, the, the filament in the light, the, resist, the resistor in the light, is where the energy uh, or originates from. So that light, you saw me yank my hands at one point, is because that bulb is getting very hot. There's a lot of energy moving through the circuit. Um, you know, that bulb is producing tons of light and tons of heat. But um, again, uh, even with my hands submerged and, you know, and, and touching the bare leads, uh, I, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I was obviously wasn't harmed. And uh, so, so this is a very compelling demonstration of, of how, you know, this nonlinear waveform, how XC power transmission is um, a very different phenomenon. So, uh, again, I want to thank you very much for uh, taking time to watch this video. Uh, I'm Alex Petty. Singularix.com is the website where you can learn more about what we're doing. Also, take a look at JeffreyNCook.com. Jeff is the CTO of Singularix. Thanks very much.
10,000 volts across that spark gap the capacitor essentially. If I had touched these rods right now, it would it could kill me. Uh, 10,000 volts running through it. Now when I apply a dead short, connecting the top plates of these capacitors with a copper rod, you'll see the signature changes dramatically. Take this copper rod, Watch what happens to the spark when I place it across here. Note, note that um, we're not harmed when the dead short's in place. The spark gets quite large. Note. Takes on an entirely different character. And also, the waveform and the scope changes entirely as well. One more thing, the, um, here I'll, I'll give you a different view. Let me set this up real quick. I just connected that so that would, it would, it would stay connected there. Um, turn it on. I want, you, I want to show you the scope view.
Jeff, hey, I was going to show you the Tesla hairpin circuit. Um, so here we are. Got uh, these four foot by three eighth inch scale rods. 40 kilovolt, uh, two picoferric caps. Made this spark gap right here. Got a transform oil furnace transformer, 10,000 kilovolt. Um, let's see it on there. Well, you can't see it so well, but anyhow. So we're going to look at the, the waveform on the scope, and I've also, I'm putting in um, 60 hertz, about 115 volts input. I don't have it on the, um, the input on the multimeter right now because it's a little bit, uh, when, the, when the strange effect starts occurring, it does, uh, it does weird stuff to the voltmeter, so I don't want to damage that. So, here it is. Okay, now here's the waveform. I think it's a spark going. About 60 hertz. There's the waveform. As you can see, it's, it's got the, uh, you know, the X wave shape, or the, at least the one on your website where it goes up, and then there's the band gap area right there, and then it continues on its way. Uh, let's see if I can. Make it more pronounced. So it's very, you can see it's very pronounced there. So that's the spark. Spark gap. And it's very cool to see the band gap stretched out like that. I mean, I think it's, I, th I think that's very cool. Now, when I, here's what happens when I attach the, uh, when I, when I create the dead short. Okay. It's going to get very loud, very loud indeed, and, and, and the spark is going to be much larger. Watch as I... So, as you can see, that was a much larger and much louder spark. Now, let me show you some of the effects that occur when I uh, start attaching the light bulb to the area above the dead short.